and then I go. So when you put it down, you go? Yes. So I'm going to pretend I'm Lee and kind of demonstrate what he'd set up. Hit a golf shot like that. Teeing off on the second hole. Coming at you from Superstition Mountain with a special guest today, Julia Sergas. And Julia is from Italy. Yep. Former LPGA Tour player. Julia Sergas. Yards. It's a short iron for most players, seven irons, eight irons. Mm -hmm. Solheim Cup member. Yeah. For Italy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And many other things. We're not going to go all the way down her resume. No. It's too long. Too old. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. We're the same age, so yeah. you can't be too old. So Julia is, is part of the Milo Lines golf team. She came on board kind of by surprise for me. Tell us a little bit about how you wound up part of the team. So we knew each other back when I was still playing here at Superstition. I was practicing and when I retired, but I was playing, so I didn't know anything about the swing. I don't, didn't know anything about technique. And when I retired, people were coming up to me for a lesson and I had no idea. I mean, I could take them to the golf course, but I couldn't really understand the golf swing. So. I decided to follow Milo to join his website. So many things clicked. And actually, when I, I started to understand many of the fundamentals, I wanted to try it on myself, on my swing. So I started doing fundamentals F1 and F2. And to tell you the truth, at the beginning, I wasn't really good at it. I mean, I was like, oh my God, this is so simple. Like F1 is so simple and I couldn't do it. So I trained <laughs> myself. I really had to practice it. And still now, these days, every time I come to the golf course, I do F1 and F2. And, and that, was, that was really enlightening. That was really fun. That was good. Cool. Yeah, so I, I still remember Julia's name popped up as a member of the site. And I was like scratching my head thinking, I know that name. So I reached out and said, are you a member of my website? And she said, yes. Yes. And I was like, well, why? <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn. I want to learn. I think, you, I think you, you explain things very easily. It's very easy to understand. Your team are really in tune with, with everything you're doing. And it's more about an athletic motion, which I love. It's one move. Uh, you don't really, you take... You know, you take pieces of the golf swing, but then you mold them together. And I think that's really cool. And the exercise you, you give are extremely important because I think in the golf business, there are no uh, exercise for, to start to build your golf, your golf swing. I always say to my students, you know, if you have to learn to ski, I can't take you to a black run first, right? And a black run would be like hitting a driver, okay, at full speed. But... In skiing, I can't take you there because you might break your bones. But in <laughs> golf, you could. I mean, nothing might happen. It's just you're going to screw up your swing and your basics. So I love that you start from the bottom. And I love that you, you start from very slow and just very easy swings just to understand. Because the golf swing actually is really, in a way, simple if you have the fundamentals. And then you can build yourself up. But everybody wants to go to the driver. Everybody wants to go to the black run. And it's just not the way to do it. So I started teaching like you do. From fundamentals, be patient, and do it every day. So what were some of the other things that you liked? Off camera a minute ago, you mentioned trigger. That I love the trigger. That was something that helped you. Yes, for sure. Because when I was on, I had it, and it was unconscious. Uh, but sometimes you lose it because of stress, because of tension, uh, because you're thinking. So mentally now that I know I'm aware that I have to have it, it helps me so much. It helps my emotion. It helps my, my being fluid. You know, it helps my keeping my athleticism through the motion. So I, I love the trigger. And that's one of the things that I, I implement in my golf swing right away. So what is your trigger? My trigger is I lift up a little bit the right heel. And then I go. So when you put it down, you go? Yes. And actually, I do it in the release. So, for example, if the target was in front of us and I was looking at the target, you know, I would be doing that all the time. That, because that's the start of the motion. And when I do that, then I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm gone. I'm gone with the golf ball. Okay. okay. 
So now let's put that to the test. You can hit it off that tee right there. Okay. Show us your, My your motion here, your little trigger and send one. Okay, lesson over. <laughs> so what I noticed there is as you got going, you, you had a little shift of pressure to the left foot as your heel came up and then back into the right foot. Yeah, exactly. Is that something you feel? For sure, yeah, that's actually, it's, it's intentional. It's intentional? Yeah, and it gives me a rhythm because a golf swing is about rhythm. Like when you talk about the swing, like the actual swing, it's really rhythmic. So this, the trigger gives me also rhythm, gives me athleticism, freedom of movement on my takeaway, so many things. Do another one, do it in slow motion so the world can see what's going on. Okay. Because it happens fast. Slow motion. So Julia, now that you have implemented a trigger in your motion, can you look back at your career at all and, and find times when the, the trigger wasn't there and it affected your performance? When it wasn't there, it was affecting my performance, 100%, for sure. There are so many wrong uh, notions, can we say that? About, you know, like no sliding, no shifting your weight, no, no this, stay in, in posture, head still, still. I mean, how can you use that word, being still on a golf course? You, you, you know, you have to move. So I think people are afraid to actually move because they have been told to not go this way. But it's not about, you have to understand what, what a good trigger makes your body do and what a trigger actually helps you do and achieve. And I think people are, are so afraid to move because, you know, because of all this stuff, well, but... People f forever have been told, keep their head still, yeah. don't sway. When in reality, a certain type of sway is actually not a bad thing. If we create a little bit of shift, that's, that's good. Now, if the shift becomes a hula dance, then, you know, that can make things complicated. But a proper shift, a proper trigger, some motion actually helps with something I like to call flow. And for me, flow is critical to being able to perform well under pressure. Yes. If you get tight, you get static, you hit bad shots. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, one of the greatest examples of flow and continuous motion is Lee Trevino. One of the greatest ball strikers ever. Yeah. One of the greatest players ever. So I had a way of playing golf that was solid. It was choke proof. And it was choke proof because I didn't have time to think. I put the hands forward, I had the ball forward, and then I would fret a stare. And if any of you have watched me play golf before, you knew I danced. I moved all the time. I would put the ball up there and then I would go. When that left foot hit the ground the last time I'd hit it. So I'm gonna pretend I'm Lee and kind of demonstrate what what Lee looks like. So first thing, Lee never quit talking. So he'd be he'd walk in here and he'd be talking to his competitors. He'd set up. And hit a golf shot like that. Teeing off on the second hole. Teeing off on the second hole. For me that's key movement stay moving don't let yourself get static especially for too long because generally what winds up happening the cogs start turning right yeah that's a sign of starting thinking so the the thinking part uh, takes over the body and the physical and then reaction to to whatever you're trying to do either reacting to the target or or making a good move yeah there is a time for thinking when you're learning mm -hmm. but as you become a good player and you're trying to take your performance onto the golf course those thoughts have to be minimized and they have to they, they can't be occurring here over the ball this no. has to be more of a reaction yes it's too fast yeah it's all happening too quick so julia we're going to have you go through your entire pre-shot routine for everybody and talk a little bit about what you learned from mental golf type one of our partners is mental golf type their performance training on the mind 
and what's best for everybody because everybody's a little different and how you have kind of modified your routines based on what you've learned about yourself. So first thing, what I really appreciate about, about you and, and your website is that, you know, you, you cooperate, you, you work with other people, and I think that's really, really cool. So when I, when I noticed that there was a mental part, I click on it and I was, you know, I work with a lot of good, good mental uh, performance uh, coaches, and I was a little skeptical, like, what is this all about? Uh, and then when you had the interview with John, I was really fascinated what you guys were talking about. So I joined the, the mental golf type. Uh, Became certified. <laughs> uh, certified. I mean, I'm in all into the learning process. And that thing is really good. It was really, really good for me because it taught me to play uh, the way I am, the way I, I am in life in general. I'm very... You know, I'm, I, I create a lot. I have a very strong imagination and I was locked up on the golf course. I, I wasn't really feeding off of that imagination and freedom. So the, the biggest word for me in golf is free, being free of creating. And I know other people want confidence more than freedom. Uh, for me, if I have freedom, I don't care about anything else. So anyway, my routine now is all about being connected to the target and, and be free to create whatever shot I want. So show us how you make yourself free. Sure. <laughs> yes. So I'm looking at the target and I, as well here, I keep moving, okay? I never stay still. So either I move the club in my hands or I move my feet and then my target is not small. I'm not that type of person that aims small, miss small. It's not me. I need to have big targets. So I kind of picture a big window or I just, I just see the background, okay? And Superstition Mountain is great over there because I can see, I can just play at the rocks, all right? And, and then in, and in that window, I create my shot. It could be a draw, it could be a fade. I can do either both. Now I'm seeing the shot, I create the vision. Uh, I, I, I have it in my mind. And when I feel it, when I really know I have it and I'm getting excited, that's a really cool part about it. That is not, I'm not worried, I'm not, these things, this imagination gets me excited. So I'm pumped up, okay? And so I'm, I'm stepping in and I keep that. Then the only time I look at the ball is when I have actually to put the club down. So I put the club down first, I put my feet, and when I line up, I actually look at the target, all right? I look at the target, I look down, I look at the target, and it has to be like a one or two second look while I keep moving. Then I go back with my eyes, and I hit it. And the goal is to hit the shot with what I created there. But I need to train it. It needs to be trained, because when I go under stress, I'm going to tend to be with my eyes here too much. So, so One of the big secrets from what I gathered there is your eyes need to be target word a lot. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for coming all the way from Italy for our golf school and to shoot some videos with me. Was worth it. Awesome. I hope you learned a little bit about trigger and creating a free motion and freeing your mind so you can play the best golf you've ever played. Come on over to MiloLinesGolf.com to learn how to swing like an athlete and play the best golf you've ever played.